Ladies and gentlemen, I am back. Now, you haven't seen me in a very long time because I've been off. Uh, I was first doing some other work on my main company and then I was on vacation. And not just me, my research team is back, the editing team is back, the people who come up with the funny skits are back. So expect magic. And most importantly, one thing I realized while I was away is that I really miss you guys and girls. It's constantly on my head what you all are thinking and the only way I can interact with you is by putting up community posts. But it is amazing to be able to create content again for you guys. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that is so insane that even the word insane might disappear from our dictionary. Stanford, the college, the university, and the woke snowflakes have created a new set of restrictions for their campus. They released a list of words that you can no longer use because this list of words offends some group of people. And no, these aren't some extremely racist or sexist words. Many of these are common words. For example, stand-up meetings were anti-disability apparently and are now quick meetings. The word American was deemed to be imprecise language and that the word US citizen is preferred, which is strange because a lot of people living in America are not actual citizens. In the words of Stanford, the term American often refers to people from the United States only, thereby insinuating that the US is the most important country in the Americas, which is actually made up of 42 countries. You can't even use the word brave because that is reserved for native people. And no, there are no alternatives that this list provides. You basically can't use a word to replace brave. The word addicted has now been changed to the word devoted, which is crazy because I wouldn't go and say I'm devoted to meth. Hey, hey, what are you doing, man? We are from India. Sir, sir I'm the devotees here, sir. W would you like to donate? Devotees, ah? Huh? Ah, give, 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 give money. Hey, don't be confused. Yeah, give, give. Give, give, yeah. Don't be confused. Give, give. This guy, acha istamal kare, ah? <laughs> A few moments later. Guys, funding will get guys. Hey, hey. Ah, do what you want. Ah, let's go. And that's not all. The word submit has been removed and replaced with process. African American has been replaced by the word black. Even though that's not actually accurate, their skin color is technically dark brown. Why are you penalizing a color of black for it? Because the color black has existed for a very long time. But whatever, these guys don't really care about facts anyways. Instead of immigrant, we now need to say person who has immigrated. The word grandfather can't be used either. The words long time no see can't be used because it's discriminatory to blind people apparently. The words trigger warning, which snowflakes use to mark sensitive content, has now been replaced by the words content note because apparently the words trigger warning itself can trigger some people. No, that's not a joke. That's literally what it says. They even removed the word Karen, which is simply the name of a person. Simply because Karen was a meme used to denote a woke lady. Even Elon Musk on Twitter thought that Stanford had gone mad. Hey, road crossing in Madachi? I am Hamamaka. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. Boys are brave for helping a Buddha like me. Hey, brave is Kobola. Hey, boys is Kobola. Buddha is Kobola. Now, why is this happening across universities in America? Here's the problem. For 16,937 students, Stanford lists 2,300 faculty and nearly 16,000 administrative staff. It's almost a one is to one between student and administrative staff. It is just a mess. Stanford administrators lord over teachers because they have nothing much to do except change policy. And the problem is, they're already really woke. For every Republican, which is the right wing in America on the faculty, 
There are 132 Democrats, which is the left wing. When you send your kids to college, you expect it to be centrist. But 132 is to 1 is a crazy ratio. It's not even 10 people on the left to 1 person on the right. It's 100 people on the left, 130 people on the left to 1 person on the right. It is not centrist at all. You are collecting a particular kind of person as faculty and administration of a college and that has repercussions. To avoid offending students and improve student fees retention, everyone in Harvard, which is a university like Stanford, is now getting A grades. Look at the GPA graphs over the last few years. The 4 GPA is the maximum GPA that is possible and as you can see, almost everyone is near the maximum today. <gasps> Exams are in 5 days. Finally, four GP again. Hey, how much? Hey, four GP. Same. The Stanford prohibited word list is a good example of the thinking that avoidance of discomfort is the best path to happiness. See, every therapist knows this. We need lots of practice with discomfort to get good at dealing with it. We can't continuously avoid it and create safe spaces because the safe space itself is small. When you box yourself inside the safe space and avoid hurtful things people can say, you start feeling claustrophobic, you start feeling trapped. So you start increasing the size of the box and start telling the world to respect more and more of your safe space. That is the problem. And I now personally feel that these wokes are now taking offense on behalf of other people. Like the word guru is banned. Dude, look at my name and where I'm from. I have no problems with using the word guru to denote a teacher. I like that my culture is being used across the world appropriately. You at Stanford taking offense on my behalf is silly and paradoxically not inclusive. In a way, it feels like these people haven't got any attention and are doing more and more extreme things to win attention. Now, here's my biggest worry. When I put this list up on my Instagram and laughed at Stanford, a few wokes from India, which really shocked me, that's not what our civilization is about, we're supposed to have thicker skin, were fully in support of it. Banning words is never okay. It reminds me of the book 1984 by George Orwell, where there's a new language called Newspeak. In the book, a political party created this language as a control mechanism. It was simplified grammar, restricted vocabulary, designed to limit the individual's ability to think and articulate any concept that they didn't like, like personal identity, self-expression, and free will. Whatever the government didn't like, they box their language so that you couldn't use those words. Such concepts were criminalized as thought crime. You are thinking of doing something criminal because you're saying these words or about to say these words. By banning some words now in the real world, we open up the opportunity for the wokes to ban even more words. Eventually, they will come for the words you use. And finally, we will be wordless, except for the words they allow you to use and even they don't agree among themselves. Hey man, I'm your new roommate. By the way, I'm really progressive. So if you don't want me to do anything you don't like, please let me know. The next day. <laughs> hey man, uh, can you not sing that song? It's offensive to my people. Sure man, peace. Actually, can you not do that sign? That's also offensive. Peace? Yeah, to the people who like violence, jeez. Day two. Hey, Macha, how are you? Oh my god! Did you just talk? 
Do you not know talking is offensive to dumb people? Are you breathing as well? Oh my god, does this kid not realize breathing is offensive to dead people? I think you just don't care about the environment these days. You keep on doing whatever the f you want and you keep on, keep on, keep on just going on and on and on and on. Oh my god, are you dead right now? See, one thing I want to establish is I really care about you people. Beyond the channel, beyond everything, everyone that's followed me and I had my own channel in the past and I've been doing this for like five or six years. I never want our subscribers and my followers to become people who can't handle the world. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. And weak men create hard times. As long as you and I are human, there will be pain. We are social creatures meant to handle this pain together, not to shut each other out and create boxes for ourselves. In fact, there's a big difference between gorillas and humans. The surrounding parts of the eyes of gorillas are black in color. This means that when there are two gorillas in a room with each other, one gorilla can't tell where the other gorilla is looking. I'm serious, this is a thing. Two gorillas cannot tell where the other gorilla is looking, which allows gorillas to deceive each other. With humans, these parts of our eyes are white colored, which means we can see where each other is looking, which helped us with hunting. I could point there and say, hey, we need to go there. And I don't even need to say a word. We are built for communication and trust. Whereas gorillas are built for deception. We are supposed to work with each other, not to ban communication. I interrupt this segment and no, it is not for a sponsored ad. So about four months ago, we started a video editing cohort. When we started out, a lot of our friends in the industry came to us and they were like, why video editing? Seems like a niche skill, right? And we were like, we have a theory. We are moving towards a world where it's easier and easier to build products, but harder and harder to get users for those products. You need distribution. And with ChatGPT coming out, there's so much text content everywhere that video is going to rule the kingdom of content. So we started with one cohort and now we're in the middle of the second one and we have created 2.2 crores in GDI. That's gross domestic income. We have created 2.2 crores in salaries through our cohort students. In the first cohort, we have placed nearly 75% of the students who applied for placements. That, my friends, is a higher placement rate than most colleges in India. The average CTC was 6 lakhs per annum. That is higher than what engineers get even. See the difference between a cohort and a course? That it's not just about the content. It's about access to network that you will never get anywhere else. So we had a gentleman named Shafin in the last cohort. And Shafin was from a very small part of Maharashtra. Small enough that when we asked him, where are you from? He didn't even tell us the name because he was like, you're not going to know the name of the place where I'm from. The first time he ever took a flight, his first ever salary was all because of this cohort. That is impact, my friends. We now have 200 plus employers, including more than 50 creators. Many of your favorite creators like Nas Daily, Finance with Sharon, they're all hiring from the cohort. The return on investment of our first cohort was 3000% plus. There is no asset in the world, not even crypto, that can get you this kind of ROI. And this is you investing in yourself, right? So we have actually created true impact. It's something I am extremely proud of and I've got news for you. The next cohort is coming. We always do a free webinar before to show you a taste of what the cohort is like. The webinar is absolutely free. We teach you a free lesson for you to see what the teachers are like, what the teaching is like, what the performance of the last cohort was. And even if you don't end up joining the cohort, I want you to come see it as investors in the channel. Even though you have not put in any money in the channel, you have spent time watching our videos. So see you at the webinar, the link is in description. As a society, if we find such wokes, we should tell them without the worry of offending them. Most people, and me included for a very long time, were worried about offending these people, thus allowing them to grow more and more confident blocking, laughably, our language. As a society, if we want to be tolerant, we strangely have to be intolerant of the people who are intolerant. If somebody is not tolerant of our words, if we as a tolerant society must learn to remove them, otherwise we will start curtailing our language. And as you all know, 
it's the small loud group that is the worst sometimes that's the hard part to find and correct these people who go on a word banning spree it is a great way to box off and shut off your thoughts i want to end with a very powerful and very famous song sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me see we're an educational channel we put out the state of the current world and we show you examples from the past or from books like the george orwell book called 1984 where somebody is doing something that the world is replicating now by doing this we are hopefully giving you a path to choose the right way of living life 77% of the people who watch our channel do not subscribe if you really want good content well researched well backed and the skits and the funny parts in between do give us a sub it's free and you can always unsubscribe later so if you aren't woke make sure you subscribe to a vtv okay don't fall for the matrix andrew tate signing off